Hello everyone, I am Veos, and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video, career mode number 20. I actually know that uh, these numbers uh, for the career mode series is kind of off. There's a couple that repeat themselves and whatnot, and blah, 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 blah. But I also fundamentally understand that <laughs> no one cares. So with that in mind, the numbers are more like guidelines than actual rules. Moving on, yes, the Enterprise, fully fueled and crewed with the, uh, the, the paying customers, all four of them. These paying elitists, the multi-millionaires of Kerbin, not only want to go to Minmus and land, but also want to go to the Mun and land. So we made for them a civilian lander, really big, nice fat lander which actually needs a redesign because there's a few things on it I want to change, but for this particular mission, it worked out pretty well. The thing that I would change would be the placement of the cockpit because right now it still says that the cockpit is blocked. So nobody, nobody's getting out unless they go through the actual hitchhiker container, which is fine for now, I guess. So thanks to the upgrade on the star drive, uh, AKA engines, we now have more thrust and more power, which means that we don't have to wait an eternity to make the trip to Min Miss. However, the damn thing is still pretty heavy, so it did take a little longer than I would have liked, but could you imagine if we only had one engine instead of four? I mean, yes, technically we had eight, but when I play career mode, I like to play with a little bit of realism and turning on engines that are in front of your ship so they can cook the rest of your ship is not exactly the greatest idea ever. Of course, in order to get to Mimis, we all know that you have to get your orbit in the same tilt as Mimis's tilt. Once you get that tilt ready, then you can just take off because basically your orbit and Mimis's orbit is in the same plane. But we all know this, right? Right? We've been playing. We, we've all we've all been playing this game for a long time, so there you go. I have been looking at Juno New Origins lately, so. But yeah, we went to Mimis. We got to Mimis. We saw, we looked, we conquered, blah, 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 blah. Got an orbit, I detached the lander, and of course the lander has never really been tested before, so I was a bit worried about the Delta V, only to find out that, holy shit, this thing could probably do the entire mission by itself. But we're not gonna go there. <laughs> the next place to land, of course, would be the Mun. But before then, I actually thought about using the lander to land at multiple spots around Minmus to gather more science. However, I wasn't too sure about the fuel. Because while the lander could probably go to the moon and land by itself and head back, I wasn't about to just leave the Enterprise in the dust. It needed to be able to do the mission as well, so they needed to work together as a team, sharing fuel and resources. So I just did the one landing to complete the contract, but that was it. Luckily enough, the moon was in a perfect spot so I could leave Mimis's orbit and head straight to it without worrying about changing the orbital plane in order to meet up with, Min uh, blah, 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 with the moon. The moon. So that was a stroke of luck. Much appreciated. Big preach. So I went ahead and slunked over to the moon. Burned up quite a lot of Delta V slowing down to get into orbit. I actually thought about maybe just saving my Delta V and not completely circularizing. Just have a big old elliptical orbit. But I said, fuck it. Just go ahead and just, 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 just get it right. In order to save fuel for the lander, I made sure to do the closest suicide burn I could possibly do. It was a little bit touchy there for the landing, but it worked out okay. So after a successful landing on the moon, it was time to head back. I tried to go for a direct approach, that way there wasn't a whole bunch of fuel wasted and getting into orbit and all that jazz. We ended up having just enough Delta V, just enough Delta V to make it back to Kerbin. Although this thing is not necessarily built for aero braking. I mean, it, it can, but it's not like it has a big old heat shield or anything of that nature. So, two things. I would either have to burn as I'm slowing down or just kind of belly flop into the lighter atmosphere. It all worked out pretty well. I decided to go ahead and dock with the space station. Well, uh, space station is a bit of a stretch, more like outpost, like a listening outpost. It's got one poor little Kerbal up there, doesn't know what to do, very lonely plays with puppets, that kind of thing. So I figured we'd just bring the party to his house. 
Once I was docked with the station, it was time to bring our multi-millionaire elitists back to Kerbin to complete it and get that check. Cut, Cut the, the check. check. So I decided to use the SSTO that's relatively new, but um, still has a little bit of a docking issue because the docking port is kind of nestled inside of the container bay, which means that it's a little bit of a little, little, little bit of an issue. Not horrible, but you know, fixable later on hopefully it was then that i realized that i didn't have any pilots anymore all my pilots are taken up i tried using an engineer and a scientist but meh so i figured okay well it looks like i just need to like buy a pilot or hire a pilot the first time ever that i've actually had to hire somebody i'm actually running out of personnel this is this is great this is mean this means we're expanding only it's very expensive to hire a kerbal 140,000 plus kerbal bucks and I don't even know how that works if that's if that's like their bonus or do, do I pay that yearly what's going on but anyway so I went from like 400,000 plus dollars to three something but that's okay because we we're going to still get paid out a lot of money if we complete this mission that's when I noticed that having a pilot even though it's great and all if he's if he or she is like no stars whatsoever, they're just as bad of a pilot as a simple engineer or scientist. But I was, I was just, I just, I, uh, I knew that in the future it would, it would be, it would pay back. So I stuck with what I, you know, purchased and just kind of manually flew the SSTO up there, which wasn't all that easy. The SSTOs that I make are very, they're meant for, they're not meant for manual flight per se. They're they're meant to be able to lock on to the pro grade and have it naturally do a gravity turn and all that jazz. So yeah. It worked though, got it up there successfully, didn't break anything. Joined up with the group, docked, loaded everybody up. Last leg of the journey, they all took pictures, souvenirs, blah blah blah. Decoupled, which was a little bit of a um 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 um. But like I said, not horrible. It's because the docking ports are so close together that when they disconnect, they bump each other off. Again, that's going to be, that's an issue that's going to be corrected as soon as we get some more tech. I mean, I could just put the docking port on top, but it would look ugly as fuck. However, there was an issue with a capsule. Now, high in sight, yeah, I, I would, you know, having a capsule on board would probably be a good thing, but there's no parachute on this capsule. So if anything happened to the station, you know... So I might, I might go to the station later and actually give it like an emergency evacuation capsule, which would be pretty cool. I can bring it up there using the larger SSTO, SSTO that we got. The, the, was it Star Dragon? Dragon Star? I forget. Blech. But I wanted to bring it back to Kerbin to see if maybe if I could, you know, turn it in for some money. Everything was working great. It looked like it was going to do just fine until we hit the thicker part of the atmosphere. And then that boy did that capsule did not like. It does not. It didn't. Not not at all. No likey at all. It hated it. It took the SSTO for a nice little flat spin. I had to position the camera so that I could focus on disconnecting the damn thing from the actual SSTO. It felt like that scene out of Interstellar with the spinning station and all that. Well, not station, yeah, spinning ship. After I finally detached the damn thing, I was able to get control back to the craft. Fly back to the damn landing runway land and boom that was it finally the entire trip oh this took days i say days but you know after you get back from work you only have an hour or so to play but it took a long time but thankfully whoo and the money that we got back holy crap i was like at three hundred thousand kerbal bucks give or take and now i'm at 700 that's like almost a 500,000. That's like what? 460? That's a lot of money. Holy crap. That, that, wow. These motherfuckers pay. That was a very, very, very nice chunk of change. But yeah, that's it. I was thinking about streaming this whole thing, but the fact that it took days to do all of this would mean that the stream would, ha. <laughs> And, you know, yeah, th that would be a very, very long stream. Not doing it. Unless I did it, like, in parts. But even then, there, there'd hardly any... Like, nothing would happen. Like, uh, uh, oh, in an hour, 
an hour it just it just took an hour just to get to minmus let alone get into orbit but anyways it was a bunch of fun so if you really 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 liked what you saw please leave a like it really helps the algorithm a lot and if you really 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 liked what you saw if you absolutely loved what you saw consider subscribing we upload often mostly Kerbal space program for now like i said before i have been looking at juno origins it's interesting the whole thing with ksp2 being a flop everybody everybody going back to ksp1 i don't know ksp is has got a very shaky future ksp1 with mods is always going to have a cult base behind it and they're going to take care of the game and and mods and all that stuff are going to take care of the game kind of like skyrim is you know still playing strong the way that works because it's a good game it really is it's just sad what you know what happened with ksp2 true there's still ugh some hope i guess but i wouldn't hold your breath we also have a membership program if you're interested you become a member you get cool emojis and badges and stuff next to your name pretty cool check it out don't forget to hit that bell for me since youtube will not notify you of my videos that i put out unless you actually do it will literally not show you anything that i put out unless you hit that bell it's it's it is what it is we're dealing with an algorithm people <laughs> Hey, future me here. Hey, look, I already know what you guys are going to say about the microphone being too close at the time. I wasn't paying attention, so I was putting the microphone too freaking close. P -p 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 Sorry about that. Anyway, moving on. Yay. But that's all for today. Again, thank you so much for being here, and thank you so much for watching. Love you all. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.